Hey, everybody. All right. I can't even believe it's our last week. This has just gone by way too fast. And there's so much more I wish I could just, you know, spend time with you guys doing. So I'm cramming what I can this week. Um, the theme is really my, my goal, I guess, is to keep it fun. Um, I know watercolor, we've Learn can be a little bit frustrating at times, for sure. It causes you, you, you have to have patience. Um, but it can also be fun if we don't forget that part of it. So I want you to walk away from this class like having strategies for how to keep it fun, not to get bogged down in it, to keep it, you know, keep it something that's going to bring you joy. So that's my goal. So we're going to play with a few things today. I have no idea where I'm going. I just like brought some paints and brushes home. I'm doing this from home so I can be with my cat <laughs> anyway um yes odd but anyway um so yeah I'm just going to play with a lot of things and see where it goes also I encourage you if you're watching this before our zoom on Wednesday which I hope you are um if you have other things that you haven't learned yet that you really 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 want me to cover please email me please email me as soon as you can so <laughs> I can um, work that into our zoom so hopefully we'll, whatever I don't handle in a few little videos today, um, we will pick up the slack in the Wednesday Zoom. So onward. Okay, I guess what we're going to do is just play. We'll see where it goes. And uh, let's have some fun. All right, so one of the first things I wanna do is just start getting some fun backgrounds going, just to play with the color again, because that's one of the ways if you are, I'm gonna take my squirt bottle, if you are um, stuck, you don't know what to paint or you're just been frustrated with it and been doing really tight paintings, um, one way to break out of that is just to start oops, playing with color. Wow, I got had some. Something on there, anyway, there we go. Letting it drip, letting it move around and maybe just getting a few, um, just seeing what I can do, getting some different uh, backgrounds going and letting them dry. So I'm just gonna kind of go through, try a few different things, see what we get. You know, thinking in terms of, uh, I don't know. Color wheel, maybe that's 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 a contrast there. Um, and some more red down there. Yeah, I like that more bluish red as opposed to that orangey. But I mean, I like the orange. But anyway, um, anyway, just getting getting colors down. See what it does, and I want to show you a few different things you can do with this too. So, um as a background, it can be, you can do a lot of stuff with it later, tightening it up, bringing in and doing something over the top of this. And before I do that, because it's like super wet, um, I want to throw on some salt. So that's one of the things that we talked about. I know a couple of you have done it in your paintings, but if you haven't heard of this little trick, it's kind of a fun thing to do to put a little salt down. And what happens is the color is going to collect where those crystals are. And it makes some really interesting patterns. Uh, I know I wanna get a little bit of blue in there because I think it looks cool. Let's see blue, get a little bit of that going right in there. Drop some in. A little more salt in that area, and we'll put this aside and we'll bring it back out after. Got one started, and we'll move on to another. So that will end up drying. I'll show you what we'll do, and then we can turn this into another painting. Um, recycling paintings is a really fun, <laughs> fun activity. Okay, we get another one going. Um, another uh, let me think, thing to do too. It's like, I don't know that I showed you a lot of dry brush. So this one, I'm gonna try doing dry brush on. And what that is, we've got a dry paper. I've got a dry brush. I'm gonna go into a little bit of moist 
watercolor, but not drippy watercolor, just getting a little bit on the brush and see I can get some mark making with that. Different than if it was wet and spreading around. So that's kind of a neat thing to try. And, you know, if you just want to get some all over texture, because we have done, well, we've done a little bit of still life, a little bit of landscape, little portraits, and kind of consider this maybe our um, abstract day if you want. Every time you put a mark down, the next mark is going to react to it. So think about it that way too, in just the mark making way, and just keeping these gestural marks going is sort of a fun thing. This can end up being a background by itself, or now that I've got those dry marks on, maybe I want to float some color in. So let's see what would happen if, I think what color would be good. And let's go with a, a turquoise-ish. Let's put some of this color in over the tops of some areas. And we're just gonna play. Keeping it fun. Get some yellow going, see what that does over the blue. So you can make green. Layering in. Okay, do you hear my cat in the background? This is who I stayed home for. <laughs> oh, goodness. Yeah, my daughter's out of town. The cat has been sick, and so nobody wants the cat to be left alone, of course. So here we are. <laughs> All right, let's see, how about getting some red up in here, pinky color over the tops of these blues. And again, just light, fun marks. There's really nothing there. It's not anything in particular. Um, that's something on there. I'm going to let this one dry as well. I can come in and can get some subtle color under the bottom. Oop, can't see that. Not much, but just like a little bit just to fill it in. But I can set that aside and bring that back after that dries and we'll we'll see what we can do over the top. Um, let's see, get another one going. This one, I've got an idea and I don't know if it's gonna work or not. And that's why I'm doing this. Oh goodness, hang on. Okay, where were we? Where the cats are rudely interrupted. Um, Okay, so I'm gonna try something um, that I've never tried before. I have no idea if it'll work or not because I want you guys to be fearless. Look, this is paper, right? Paper is relatively cheap. Um, it's not like expensive canvases. So if you are oil painter, or acrylic painter, and, and you know you know what I mean, it's hard to waste. Well, you know, you can always paint over those, whereas paper, hmm. Not so much, but I'll show you ways that we're gonna deal with that later. Anyway, I just wanna get some color on here. Mm -hmm. Two shades of blue. Um, so I've got cerulean and a ultramarine. Start thinking ocean, I suppose. <laughs> um, even though we're thinking abstract. But what I want to, the idea I want you to take away from this is that don't be afraid to try things and to experiment. I do so many experiments in my studio all the time. I was experimenting with plastic and wax this week and honey, so <laughs> making all kinds of messes. Um, but it's fun, and that's what makes art like so great that that experimental quality of it. Make a little bit more color on the top. Dark in there. Okay, so we've got some great you know, swirly line work going on. And now let me show you what I'm going to do. It's just an idea. I have this thought of just like throwing down a few paper clips in random places. Maybe. Maybe. It will work and maybe it won't, but we will see. All right, so paper clips down. What I want to do is just spray with some water around them and see what happens. I'm going to do a little bit more. I think I'm going to get just some of that blue and pop that down with a few splashes. 
So just a flick. You can also flick it like that with your finger. Just be careful not to be wearing anything that you care about. I'm wearing tight ass today. <laughs> So once you have a little bit of color down, you've tried, you know, just let, the, we're just gonna let that dry. Move it somewhere and very carefully and let it dry and we'll see what happens. Okay, so next, um, try different papers. So this is, I think we've talked about this one before. I might've demonstrated on it, but anyway, it's UFO paper. So if I bring out a little, little swatch of that to see what we can do with it. Um, it's, it's a plastic. So it really handles watercolor differently. Trying different surfaces. They also make uh, grounds for watercolor that you can paint on anything, paint it on uh, you know, a metal plate, whatever you want, and then it, it absorbs the watercolor. So trying different things like that and experimenting in that way can just kind of reignite your, your passion and your excitement for your art. All right, so let's see, get some red. How this takes the paint. Again, just doing some abstract stuff. I'm playing around. See what it will do. It doesn't move on this like it does on the other. It just kind of stays in one place for the most part. Um, let's see. Let's get some yellow in there. So see when I even just strip it, it doesn't go, it's not going to go spread because there's no fibers for the watercolor to travel through. So I can put that dot right there. It'll take a while to dry, but it will dry eventually. Maybe I'll come in here and do uh, a few more things with it. And the thing is, if you don't like anything um, that is coming out with this, or if there's parts you don't like, you can wipe them off, which is kind of neat. So you can play. Get it done. Back for more red, but anyway, why not? I can almost get like a brush stroke in that and see the markings. So that's kind of a neat feature of this. Um, you know, when you're considering too, like what, you know, what colors to use, all of it. I think I'm kind of liking this, but we've got yellow, red. So it's naturally to want natural, natural to want to go blue next to keep a primary color palette. Let me go with the cerulean blue and see what happens if I pop some of that in some of these areas. I like to having some white area, I don't know. I think that's kind of nice to have places for your eye to rest, but I'm also having fun playing with this, so I don't know, let's see. So this is, you know, definitely <laughs> an example of, of what you can do abstract. It's non-representational. Um, you can do abstract that's representational, but just have like a hint of floral or something, you know, play with it however you want. If I decided to, you know, go in with a green and start just, oops, the green and just drag stuff up. Oh yeah, it's getting very saturated with water. It's all just sitting on top at this point. Um, but playing, let's see. If I had a Q-tip, that would work, but I'm bound so. Oh, I'll just be dry brush. Getting a dry brush and picking up some of that and playing with it that way. Kind of getting these forms going in it that feel very natural. So it's a, it's a fun way to play. I want to take a, accentuate the roundness of that. Maybe it's the sun. All right, so I'm going to let that one dry and we will bring it back later and do some things with it once it dries. I hope if it dries. <laughs> no promises. It might be Wednesday.
I wanted to show you what I just was doing a study last night because I'm doing a painting with this person in it in a uh, in an encaustic painting, but I wanted to do some different studies of her. You want to put a lot of time into um, you know developing too much too many um, values, but I wanted just the main you know a dark a light <laughs> and then in between just slightly, so it didn't even go all that dark, but a little bit. Um, but I was having fun with it. And then at the end, I took out my highlighter and just played with that. So mixing things up and not being afraid to just try that because like, this isn't anything I'm keeping. It was really just to help me, you know, get her expression. And it wasn't even about being a realistic face because for the painting sake, it's, you know, the style of what I'm doing with it. I really am all about the expression and not so much making these very realistic looking people. They're, they're a little off, a little quirky. Um, so that's what, that's what this is. And I just wanted to show it to you just to show you like, you can do, you know, anything you want. You want to grab a highlighter out of your desk drawer and play with it along with your watercolor. It's kind of a fun, exciting thing to do. Okay, so another fun thing to do is to grab um, postcards that you've collected from museums or like this one, or, um, you know, photos um, in your art books, if you have any of like famous paintings. So if you have a favorite famous painting, um, doing a copy of an oil painting, for example, but doing it in watercolor is gonna result in a very different painting. And I think it's a neat practice just because now I can just play with technique, I can play with my matching colors, whatever it is is your goal, you can focus on that rather than on composition. Whereas composition is important, I want you to be learning it and making up your own and not being afraid of it. I'd rather not have you copy as a regular thing, but uh, as a, well, as a practice to practice is a good thing, but also breaking away to do your own. So like kind of interspersing it in your practice every now and then, pulling out something that, that you admire and just making a little reproduction in a watercolor. And it can even just be a tiny watercolor. It doesn't have to be anything elaborate. Um, of course, this is Monet's water lilies in the bridge. And um, I actually got to paint there in person. I did, um, I used pastels for the one I did in person. But um, no, yeah, his is out of oil. So I'm gonna look at this and see, put it here. See it all. And I'm just gonna do like a little, little thumbnail, a little painting of it right here, just for fun, just to show you that it's not, you know, yeah, it doesn't have to be perfect at all. So yay. I want to match some of those colors. So I want to match and maybe get the green bridge down. I don't know. I think I feel like I should do, yeah, to keep that white in there too. It's gonna to be interesting. Well, let's just see what we can do. I'm just gonna go for the bridge. So just don't be afraid. Again, if this is paper, I can throw it away. Yeah, that's definitely not the right shade of green. I got enough blue in it, but I didn't. All right, let's go with that again too. Um, let me get the bottom one. Um, front ones and the railing that's kind of going on the other side. That not that it matters, but you know. <laughs> that one's actually close together, but oh well. That's fun. Okay, so you get that on and then we can just start playing with other areas. That's just kind of fun just to see what, you know, see what's going to come out of this. I'm not anticipating like doing this whole thing because I don't want to take too much time, but um, I'm trying getting some of these greens down. Nice that you know the bridge is such a blue green and the foliage around it is a lot warmer, uh, more yellows in it, so it can contrast. I can start 
pulling some of these areas in, even as it's wet. I'm just gonna go for it and see what I can do instead of being patient. Um, you can certainly let the bridge dry or you can you know, pick up some of it because I know I'm gonna want a little bit of white there. I might end up going in with a white pen to get some highlights if I, you know, if I work on this for any length of time, I want that. But I think the best part of this kind of activity is just relaxing. Like this is something to do. It's too hot to go outside. Well, today it's not as cold. But anyway, you're not outside. You're inside. Um, you don't know what to paint. And rather than just not painting because you're not coming up with an idea, um, studying somebody else's painting, studying their composition, their color choices, things like that. And even if it's not going to come out, you know, just like it, which it's not, um, I'm getting the idea of it and I'm having fun. So I guess that's the main thing. Like you don't beat yourself up and it's not anything you even have to show anyone. It's just kind of like, this is just for me. I just wanna figure out a few things. Let's see. Let's see. Area, got these browns. Side. So, yeah, just playing, seeing what colors are going to work. You know, I know I'm going to be going over, or I don't know, but I probably would be going over with other color and fixing things here and there. But just starting, starting out simple. I don't want that too close to that, but that's okay. All right. Um, and so, yeah, it doesn't matter, like, whoever your favorite artist is, and in go on to a museum website. There's even something current out, contemporary artists too, but I like doing, you know, uh, the old favorites, the old masters and the impressions especially is fun with watercolor because I think it just kind of lends itself to it even though, you know, this wasn't watercolor. Um, I think it's, uh, It works nicely with it. Now I'm putting blue in, but I am going to go over that. I just didn't want these are the dark areas rather than putting black, um, going in with just an ultramarine blue. And then I'll probably go over that with a little bit of oops, brown. Let me take that up. That's kind of fun. Let's see. Using my dark stick up eyes, actually, I've got, yeah, a little dark in there. And then the light's hitting there. Oh, and then right along there. Anyway, it's giving a little bit of the impression of it. <laughs> Not even close yet, but awfully fun. So if I were to grab the burnt umber, or the raw umber, I think that's what, yeah, that's raw umber in this one. And I have one palette that has the burnt and I always confuse them. Um, I'm mixing a little more ultramarine blue with the raw umber in order to make a dark. So I can go back over that, see how dark that gets. So it's like black, but not. Um, I'm liking the puddle effect of it. Yeah, coming into some of these areas. To get them further darker. And this is to the time to just, you know, of course you're playing, but you also want to just kind of 
you know, remember some of the rules, but also throw some away, experiment again. This is experimenting day. So I don't know, you know, what exactly is gonna work all the time. I, I just kind of try it and, and trust, I guess. Someone trusts. <laughs> so still trying to keep a light area there for where the lily pads are. So I can try picking some up like that. This is the paper that doesn't pick up well, unfortunately. But oh well, let's see. If I put straight water down, I'm gonna pick some of that up. The dry brush. Yeah. Some papers pick up and some don't. Same paints, you know, that I'm pretty much always using, except when I pull the, the liquid ones out of tubes. But um, so it's really not the paint, it's the paper. If you're having trouble doing the same kind of pickup thing, just, you know, know that this is a common deal um, on some papers. All right, so I'm not gonna worry about it. I'm just going to keep having fun. And this dries, I can go and dry brush on some of this foliage and start dropping in some of the flowers and then defining the bridge more. That's kind of the plan. Let's see what the bridge I've got. Yeah, let's just go for that. Get some of the under part of the bridge, I think. It won't be too wet for that. There we go. And. start melding some of these things together. And again, I really don't, you know, this is for fun, it's just to make a exact copy, but just like maybe pretending I'm there that day again, and what did I see and how do I interpret it? So if you are, you know, trying to get it exactly like Monet's, <laughs> or if I, if I were trying, I should say, I'm not succeeding, but that's, I don't think, a goal I would want to have necessarily. I like the idea of, you know, kind of just interpreting it myself from his. So that's an easy thing to say when you're not doing it well. But no, I'm kidding. Um, it, it, I mean, I think it really is important because then it becomes your own. It's not a copy. Of course, it's a copy because everybody sees, you know the bridge of Giverny as Monet's bridge. It's it's his. So there's really no way you can do one of these without people looking saying, oh yeah, you know, you copied the thing. And that's fine. If you know if you're showing this and everything, it's absolutely fine. But also just learning something from it. I think that's kind of maybe my point. You have something that you want to learn from it. He went out there, he grew these gardens just to uh, just be able to have something to paint, to have subject matter. So lucky him, he got to go out there and paint this whenever he wanted. And it looks different at different times of the year. So it's just kind of amazing that way. Um, I've got a lot of those going on. Probably darker than I want, but they'll probably dry lighter too. Always kind of keep that in mind. Uh, sorry. So now I'm gonna get that dark area there little dark mossy green, so a little, little green, getting a little brown in with my green, or you could put a little red in with your green, um, and get some of those colors in the edge of the moss area. So anyway, you get the idea. I didn't want to, I know I said I wasn't going to spend too much time. You know me. I just start going I'm like, oh, well, we won't spend much time. And 20 minutes later, I'm still picking at it and trying to do different things. And it's like, oh, 
oh yeah yeah like notice how your eye goes straight to that i got that area way too dark fix up some of that up it's fun to just notice these things after the fact so i'll let that dry we can go back in we can do highlights we can just keep adding layers so that's the thing too with with watercolor it's adding those layers and then knowing when to stop that's always the thing of knowing when to stop and sometimes we do and sometimes we just keep going but once you get what you want out of it if you want to just to play with matching that color of the bridge you know or you want to just play with the composition a little bit or or, or with you know laying down paint in a fun way that's kind of that's kind of good then you know you, you've achieved something so it doesn't have to be a perfect match it can be you know anything you want it to be all right we're going to bring back Let's bring back this one, one of our early ones. That's the one with the dry brush. And that other one is ready too. Let's see. Oh, yeah, the salt. I'm going to let that dry a little bit longer. Okay, so we'll play with this one next. Um, so when you have something like just abstract, you know, you want to maybe develop it. So you notice like this is really, you know, it's, it's cool. And I can keep going in an abstract way with it and adding layers on that way. That's one option. I can also go in maybe with something more realistic and just having that as an abstract background. So that's another possibility. Um, there's no rights and wrongs. This is just a play day. So it's kind of um, the brushes. It's whatever you feel like doing. So let's see. I am thinking, I don't know what I'm thinking. <laughs> I have no ideas. Okay. Um, We've got a lot of angular lines and things. What if we had a plant right here that was going and that's kind of the wallpaper's background. That could be, maybe that would be weird. But let's just go for it. Let's just, all right. Um, we've got a lot of, let's just go for just a regular potted plant right here. And maybe you have like a teacup or just any kind of still life that you wanted to start maybe thinking about grabbing. I don't know if this is gonna work or not. I'm not sure if I'm liking the terracotta next to the color palette that we had, but we're off and running. So we'll just go for it. Mm. That dry brush is getting dry. So again, since it's just playing, no stress, right? It's really okay. Um, we want to create sort of a roundness. So you know we're, we're still new to this. So give yourself grace. Try different things. See what happens. But as you're putting the color down, try to like get that form. Think about where the light might be hitting it. Um, Petals going over that anyway, but um, you know, even letting some of that background come through that makes it sort of interesting. Okay, so let's say I'm gonna go with something a little dirt coming out of there a little bit. Zooming in for the actual plant. It's so fun when there's just like no plan. <laughs> just go for it. If I wanted to pull that green in, that would be a good idea, wouldn't it? That's just like sort of a blue green kind of plant. And just let's have some fun pulling those. <laughs> all right kind of like how this is swirling into what was already swirling there so it's kind of giving it a uh, something to echo and what if i brought that in for the shadow a little bit or the grounding of that pot Mm 
of hoops. A little too far with that. Remember, you can always wet your brush and move stuff around, sort of depending on what paper you have, but generally you can. And so it's 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 getting somewhere. It's looking kind of different, right? And you know, it's not anything to write home about, but not bad. Little shadow under the lip. And as this dries too, I can go in and do more layers. You can always keep trying things on it too. And remembering it's like, this didn't start out to be anything. So if I ruin it, so what, you know? And, um, I didn't tape any of these down. I didn't bring my boards and tape with me home, but um, I thought, you know what? It doesn't matter. These are just practice fun. So oftentimes when you do have it all set up or you're on a block or whatever, you don't, it, I think it intimidates you a little bit more because it's, you, you put some time into that part of it. So don't be afraid to just, they you all know, like just grab scraps of paper, extra watercolor paper, whatever, and, and paint and, and just have fun with it. All right, so that is that. Let's let that go dry. And we can always come back and do more layers if we want. And bring the salt one in, see what's happening here. So you can see, how this is all uh, the color collects where the salt crystal is and it ends up making these interesting little puddles and marks. So it'd be a really fun background for something. I don't know, you know, you can do a landscape with it or um, or another, you know, you do something abstract, you do what we just did with the plant. Anyway, once it's dry, which yeah, it feels like it's mostly dry about that area, but anyway. All you do is just brush that off. Let's see if I have a dry brush. Brush it with your finger. You can brush it with a brush. Um, let's get the salt off of it. And then you can just paint over the top. So see, see those interesting marks? It just adds something. So like if you were doing say a portrait and you wanted something interesting in the dress or whatever, or skirt, you can put some salt in that one area of the painting. Or if you're doing a sky, you know, and you just want it like maybe to resemble the stars or something, you know, you can do that for your sky. Um, kind of anything you want with this. It's a really fun little technique because you never know exactly what you're going to get. I use Malden salt. Different salts are going to give you different things. Kosher salt, um, the bigger the crystal, like they work differently. So experiment with different salts that you have, um, even just Morton salt makes really interesting patterns. So just me. <laughs> so, all right. Um, okay, so let's see what will happen if we go over some of this, you know, because again, you know, watercolors are transparent. So let me see. Let's think about what way. Yeah. So maybe, you know, if I start like looking at it and saying, what, what does this resemble? What could this be? So you could work it that way, or you could just keep it abstract and add things in. You could do something over the top um, that's gonna cover up some of this. Um, yeah, let's just see. This is feeling like sky and, and hillside to me. And if I made this the foreground, it's something interesting in the foreground, then I can see where the, the background is gonna go from there. So let's... Um, some green, maybe. Maybe if I did it with a dry brush too, let's get some dry brush technique going. We can make grassy areas with dry brush, depending, to keep it dry. You know, I shouldn't have gone down with water first, but oh well. Leave them alone. So maybe that is our front area. It might be fun to get a liner brush and a little bit darkish. Cattails, so oh, that might be too dark for cattails. Yeah, those are awfully dark, but I did it. Let's see. 
I can talk if I can fade them out a little bit. Quick start. Yeah, it's kind of interesting. Why not? We'll keep this somewhat abstract. Fun little area here. I have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> I love when I have no idea what I'm doing because it can just be fun. There's no pressure. I can just play. And that's what I want you guys doing. Just play. You don't know what's going to happen. It's fun. And if you don't like it, it's not a big deal. Like I said, you've got nothing. No, no real time invested too much, you know. Not of much money invested. It's just a teeny bit of watercolor. So you get the idea. You can just kind of do whatever you want with this. Just start imagining things and saying, okay, like back there is looking like that could be. I'm always relating to the back bay because it's right outside my window. So that could be the hillside out the back bay and some of the reflection on the water is the sun. I don't know what this would be then, but anyway, it could be that. <laughs> it is a cloudy day. I love these purple and orange. Pink clouds. Maybe that's just still land. Maybe we'll keep that land and maybe that would be the water and that would be the hills. See? Always something. Turn that into hills. Like maybe accentuate that yellow right there and pull it back in a little bit. Yellow sky. Hills. And now we'll come back to that blue and have a base of where water's coming in. Let's see what happens. Either way, I'm having fun. But it's just kind of fun layering these colors. Just look at the little nuances you get. So even if it's not exactly you know, <laughs> looking like anything in particular, <laughs> I really don't like how dark that one got, but um, we'll take that out. If it's not looking like anything you really were shooting for, it's really okay because I'm having fun just looking at the colors shining through the colors that were there. So it's fun when you have this background all painted and then just to go in and imagine, you know, what it could be. Ooh, I could make a tree over what that was and have that come in instead. Cover that up because I don't like that at all. Let's see. We'll do this. Uh, this would be way in the foreground. That's kind of fun. Now I can get more color up in here if I want it. <laughs> and again, experiment if you want. Like, what would it look like to just drop watery green down on here? I don't know. Let's try. Kind of liking how that can work. So if I just put a bunch of water, but now I can come down with a little bit more color. 
Oh, and look at that, it's dripping in such a fun way. And I can control that a little bit too. I like how it's dripping, but now I'm gonna run it back this way and down and turning my page. I can let that dry. I can go back in and tighten things and do more, do less, but something's coming together. I mean, it's not, you know, it's, 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 it's all fun. Um, again, you can pick things up with paper towel, with sponges, um, even with plastic, like plastic wrap. I bringing it over there. I got a piece here. Like if I put a piece of plastic on there and pick it up, it's now it's causing, well, it's really runny right now. But anyway, I can get some different textures sometimes. Sometimes it's better just the saran wrap, trying that, you know, crinkly. So, you know, just different things because you never know what it's going to do. I want to show you the Yupo again because this is almost dry. You can see that the middle part right there is still wet, but most of it is now dry. Um, so I could go over this and add more color in if I wanted to. Let's just see what happens. I'll try a little bit more. Like what if I, I don't know, let's put some blue there just to see what it does. And then I'm going to keep that area. So maybe I just want to refine a couple areas and go do something with it. Let's see, I can go right back on it. I can also get the whole thing wet and take stuff off. Or if I don't like what I just put on, I can, well, pretty much take it off. If I got that wet, I could take even more off. If I use uh, like a magic eraser, one of those magic eraser sponges, I could probably take even more off. Yeah, and get it to clean. So that's the neat thing about UPO is that like you can use it again and again, kind of like a right on white cloth board for watercolor. Um, but again, it's not gonna travel like the other watercolor does. So it's great for experiments. Um, lots of fun, but not necessarily, you know, traditional watercolor for sure. So here's the, uh, <laughs> the uh, paper clip experiment. I don't know that it really worked, um, but you know, don't be afraid to try it anyway. This, oh, actually, that's not bad. Look at that. I didn't think that worked. Okay, so cool. It's still damp, but you could do something with this. Um, it's kind of an interesting thing. So that's just like anything, get like nuts and bolts or um, I don't know, just anything you have that's going to maybe just cause the, the watercolor to pool up in a certain area and you'll get some neat patterns. So again, it's playing, it's just having fun and playing with, with what you, you know, playing with your materials. All right, so Let's see, but one last thing, I might just save that. I'm gonna tell you about it though. So let me uh, switch cameras here. For class, for the Zoom, there we go. One of the things I was thinking about doing was just grabbing old pieces, old watercolors that you absolutely don't wanna save. So pieces that you've practiced on, um, you know, get, maybe three, two, three, four even if you want, and just bring those on Wednesday. And we're gonna try something kind of neat with them. So make sure it's something that you don't wanna keep. And if you don't have anything that you don't wanna keep, then just paint up any old thing. And so you have three or so, three to four different pieces to play with. And we're gonna try something really neat on Wednesday. And again, anything else you wanna learn that I haven't covered, cause there's so much, so much, so much. And I feel like oh, eight weeks is just not enough time. But if there's something you're just dying to learn and see, just email me quickly. All right. Have a great week. See you soon. Bye.